There's a, one more clip I wanted to play here, which was a recent exchange that you had with uh, Dave Smith, who we've had on the show before, and we've had both disagreements and agreement with him. You uh, raise your hand if you've him. been personally victimized by Dave Smith. No, just kidding. <laughs> I, I deeply enjoy Dave. Yes. Uh, and we, uh, you, you recently clashed with him on Piers Morgan's show. Uh, let's play a little bit of that and then talk about the root of that conflict in a little bit more relaxed format where you can explain the point you were trying to get to. The Yemeni people who have been seizing these ships um, are, are sending a message that, you know, let in humanitarian aid and we'll let these ships pass through. It's not about um, killing people. You want to talk about the Houthis that are fighting for freedom. How dare you? How dare you not acknowledge what the Houthis are doing in Yemen? Do you do you listen to Yemenis and their voices and what they have to say? They are being terrorized. They are being starved. They are being killed. A, a, a young Arabic woman is uh, on death row right now in Yemen for criticizing the Houthis. I just think we have to have one standard here. And this is kind of the point I was getting to with national sovereignty. Like, let's if we're going to talk about things, let's have one standard. If our concern is over what's been happening to the people in Yemen, as you said, what the Houthis are doing to them, th do you know what's been happening to the people of Yemen over the last eight years? It's been the number one humanitarian crisis in the world, mm. in the war that Saudi Arabia launched on them with full backing from the United States of America. Okay, if you care about horrible things happening to the people of Yemen, then you better be criticizing Saudi Arabia and the United States of America. This war just ended yeah. over in, in the last year. The eight years That's previous to that were them. devastating. That's a what about to them. No, it's That's not what about. No, 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 no. What about is what? what no. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm not finished. No, 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 no. That, you said you weren't finished. No, you said you baptism. weren't finished before. I'm not finished now. What aboutism is a word that people yell when you call them out on their hypocrisy? I'm saying let's have one no, no, standard. No, absolutely not. I let's, can explain to you why it's a what aboutism. What, what, what about ism? What are we teenagers? What does this word even mean? I'm putting this into historical context. So that you understand, okay? A what aboutism deflects from the issue that was presented. The issue that I presented to you, okay, it's a logical fallacy. What I presented to you was the fact that the Yemeni people do not support the Houthis. And you you brought up, well, what about the fact that they don't support this and this? I didn't bring That's that no. up. No. By the way, I didn't. No, let keep here. Hold on. Let's just be clear here. No, let me let explain me so you understand. Well, let me finish. I'm not saying let that. Let me finish that's... my sentence. Huh. Okay, go ahead. What I told you is that the Yemeni people have been vocal. If you would listen to their voices, you don't listen to their voices because they the radical and extremist voices are the ones that are propped up, okay, by the algorithm, by the media, and the people on the ground that are telling you they don't support the, the Houthis, okay. that's I'll, even I'll, the I'll, 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 I'll support resistance. Listen, I'm not, uh, uh, certainly, I, I don't resistance. know exactly. I, I'm open to the idea that there are a lot of people in Yemen who do not support the Houthis. I'm not defending the way the Houthis treat their people. I'm not defending the way the Iranian government treats their people. What I'm saying is that if we're going to not be hypocrites here and we're criticizing them because we're concerned about how the people of Yemen are treated, where is this uh, criticism for the much bigger disaster that's been caused in that country over the last eight years? So I, I don't think you actually got a chance to reply to his last point there because of the format. It's tough being you know, remote when everyone else there is in person. Is there anything uh, else you'd like to add to that argument or expand on your argument about what aboutism? Yeah, look, um, and this, um, the Yemeni people, I, I, there's certain accounts that I've also kind of shared on my Instagram as well. The, those Yemeni people have always been critical of, of, of every, every form of oppression that they've experienced. This isn't the first time that they've come out and criticized, you know, the Houthis and the Houthis only. Um, the reason that I, I explained that that was a deflection is because he had previously said, or many people had previously said that the Houthis were heroes and the he, uh, Houthis were fighting the good fight. And the point that I made was that you cannot support um, the Houthis when they are um, terrorizing the Yemeni people the same way that you can't support the Islamic Republic when they're terrorizing the Iranian people. And his point was to turn around and say, well, what about the former Yemeni government? Okay, if everything that you say about the former Yemeni government is true, blah, 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 blah. Does that mean that you now get to support the Houthis? No, it doesn't. And that's why it's a whataboutism, because nothing that you say changes the fact that you have no right to support them right now. Is, was Dave making an argument in favor or in support of the Houthis or calling them heroes? Or is he merely making an argument that says, well, if we're going to be consistent critics, we have to be 
you know, paying attention to the role that Saudi Arabia and the United States have played in destabilizing Yemen? No, because we are. This isn't a conversation about us being critics. This isn't a conversation about us being critics of what's going on in Yemen. This is a conversation where they are introducing this concept that the uh, that the Houthis are doing something that we should all be supporting. So it's actually an attack against their premise to say that no, you shouldn't be supporting the Houthis because that is not what the people of Yemen are asking you to do. And then so introducing um, something else is 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 it's a red herring. It's a deflection to the fact that you the person who brought up support for the Houthis, this counter argument destroys your premise that we should be supporting the Houthis and your response is to deflect it to something else. That's what makes it a, a whataboutism. I, um, I follow the logic of your argument there. Um, I am curious, though, about what you think of Dave's other point, which is that Sometimes people who, uh, you know, when you're defending um, Israel or you're defending or you're criticizing the Houthis, that there can be a sort of myopic view of things, that uh, there's an unwillingness to look at what what contribution has the U.S., which is the government we live under, made to this situation, that we have to look at the fact that the U.S. backed Saudi Arabia's a campaign against Yemen is a real problem that doesn't really seem to get much attention. Like, sh like is is does he have a point that we really should be paying more attention to who we're supporting and, and what kinds of interventions um, we're, we're making and what the consequence of those interventions are? We have to follow the logic. We have to follow the logic. Um, so as I said, the Yemeni people do speak about that. You, what you're saying would absolutely be correct if, let's say, for example, no one had mentioned the Houthis and I just popped up and was like, guys, let me tell you about why the Houthis are so bad. You'd be absolutely right to be like, well, isn't that interesting that you haven't men mentioned X, Y, Z? And this is what's so critical because there has to be a proper analysis of what is the argument attacking. The initial premise is that was brought up is why the Houthis um, should be supported for this. And it was an attack against that. Now, if you start to go into other things that should also be um, uh, criticized, Yes, they should also be criticized. It doesn't respond to the argument. So something that doesn't respond to the um, argument is a deflection, right? And, and that's the point that's being made. Many things can be true at the same time. Nobody is saying that we shouldn't criticize that. It's you who brought up the po point of who we have to support. And this is exactly what they complain about in the other direction, right? When people speak about what's going on in Gaza, um, a, 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 legitimate, a legitimate response is, why aren't we talking about the biggest genocide happening in the world right now, which is in Darfur? Why aren't we talking about Syria? Why aren't we talking about what is happening in Iran? And they get very upset when you say that, but it's a legitimate, it's a legitimate point, right? Why aren't we talking about those things? And then the pro-Israel side is going to say, well, that's because of anti-Semitism. That's because of no Jews, no news. You know, there are multiple things that can be true at the same time. But what is important is that you are responding to the premise that has been introduced. The premise introduced was support for the Houthis and the response was to attack that premise, no bearing on anything else that's ever happened in Yemen. And of course, those are all things that we can and should be criticizing when they come up on their own. I mean, Dave's whole stick is criticizing American empire, right? And, you know, I think that there's a lot of validity to that and a lot of I mean, there's a reason why he does that. I mean, his audience is predominantly American and there's a sense of, you know, how do we dial back American foreign interventionism? And I think it's totally fine to engage with that and to say, you know, we we come to different conclusions as to um, the necessity of that. But I mean, I think Dave does a good job of turning people's attention toward the fact that the Houthis didn't just pop up out of nowhere um, and that if we're speaking to an American audience, they should be considering, is this what we want our taxpayer dollars? Um, do we want our taxpayer dollars uh, aiding what Saudi Arabia is doing? And when that indirectly does end up introducing this amount of conflict in Yemen and destabilizing an already unstable region. What do you make of that sort of the, the you know, Dave's bigger picture, um, the thing that animates him of trying to roll back American foreign interventionism? Well, if you said that, 
you know, that would have been a good argument. That isn't what he said, though. That was a, 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 an inappropriate rebuttal to what I said. It was a deflection to what, um, what was actually being introduced. That bringing up that on its own is a perfectly valid argument. I also, it, what concerns me, what concerns me, which is what a lot, a, a lot of um, Americans often tend to do, because um, I, I've, I'm, I'm, I've spent my life as a Middle Eastern woman criticizing the West's role in the Middle East and, and, in, and in different countries. But what I find that a lot of American people tend to do is that they hyper focus on um, criticism of the West to the extent that they almost give a pass to these like um, terrorist regimes uh, or fundamentalist groups. And they say, oh, well, this is all because of Western um, um, intervention. This is all because the West propped them up. Yeah, the West propped them up, but they existed long before the West propped them up. And this is not like it's actually to me very racist. It's very racist that there's this implication. Yeah, it's a self-absorbed way of looking it's at it. So them. Western centric. It's so Western centric that like nothing bad would happen in the world if the most important people in the world, aka the West, weren't uh, actively making things happen. Yeah, the I mean, I, I agree with I agree with the that critique, uh, and I, I think we touched on that earlier. But um, I think w one thing that we need to contend with is what should the U.S. be doing? Because when I look at the history of what's happened to Iran, we talked about Mossadegh earlier. You know, in the fifties, they had a democratic Iran had a demo, this democratically elected leader who was a nationalist. He was accused by the US and UK at the time of being sympathetic to the communists, even though he really wasn't. Um, but he was trying to nationalize the oil, which upset the British uh, oil interests there. And it's pretty openly acknowledged now that the, the British uh, intelligence and the US intelligence worked together to overthrow that regime. And from my historic, from my perspective, that set in motion a series of events that led to the rise of Islamic radicalism in uh, Iran. A am I wrong to look at the history that way? And if so, what am I missing? Yeah, it did. It didn't lead to the rise of radicalism. The radicalism was there. There's been different instances where these things have helped empower um, or, or exaggerate the radicalism, and that's that's the thing that um, people really, you know, when when you even just look at the history of the Middle East and how, like, you go back to um, even just how. Uh, the seventh century Muslim conquests all around the Middle East and North Africa um, region. This wasn't, uh, you know, people didn't go around and say, hi, please, can you um, just um, become um, Muslim or Arabic? Of course, this was all done by, um, it was colonialism, it's imperialism. We have a long history of our own our, our own colonialism and imperialism. We had the the Arab slave trade that last for, lasted for 1300 years. We had many, many, um, uh, uh, radical groups, Islamist fundamentalists. But I think that the main issue is, the main issue for me that I really struggle with is this overcorrection. There was this period of time where there was an acknowledgement of a uh, Western interference in the West that people openly acknowledged, okay, this was a bad thing. We've been telling you this was a bad thing, right? And then the overcorrection was, okay, so what we should be doing instead is a diplomacy with these, um, with these extremely pr problematic regimes. And so what I say in response to your question of what the West should be doing, and, and this is one of my favorite quotes to respond to things like that, is that if I wanted to get there, I wouldn't have started here. We're in a situation now where the West has empowered, first of all, helped bring, introduce the um, Ayatollah to, to Iran, bring in this Islamic Republic. For the past 45 years, they've been engaging in diplomatic relations with this regime to kind of counteract the whole history of like, oh, okay, we're not going to do any uh, of these military interventions anymore. What we're going to do instead is do um, diplomacy with these regimes. They've now uplifted the regime 
And it to me, this is just Western imperialism all over again. It's just different permutations, different faces of Western imperialism. But don't don't we need? I mean, isn't is aren't the options essentially diplomacy or war? I mean, there is a contingent no. of uh, politicians here in the U.S. who've wanted war with Iran for a long, long time. John McCain, bomb, 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 bomb Iran. John Bolton is talking about uh, that we need to strike Iran. Trump pulled us out of the Iran deal, which I heard you, you were critical of the Iran deal earlier, but like the reality yeah. is that I've pulled up a, I've pulled up a um, chart from the Institute for uh, Science and International Security that shows these two red lines. No, nuclear when the Iran nuclear deal took effect, they did stop enriching nuclear materials at the level that they would need to make nuclear weapons. And once Trump pulled us out of that deal, they started making enriching nuclear material again. So isn't backing just away from not. diplomacy just a path to direct confrontation or war with Iran? No, that, that's Islamic Republic propaganda. First of all, um, German re uh, intelligence reports actually revealed that, that they were cheating um, during the um, JCPOA. They were not adhering the way that um, Obama had claimed that they were. Um, the second thing is that um, the JCPOA was replete with sunset provisions that ended within like a 10, 15 year period. So what they had actually done is unleashed $150 billion to the regime and then they, with a temporary restriction on their um, nuclear acceleration. After that period of time has passed, they, they're now this much richer and they have the opportunity. They were just kicking the can down the road. And that is so dangerous. It was there, so there's dangerous. Been a lot of, there's been a lot of uh, claims and counterclaims about whether or not and to what extent they were adhering to that deal. And I would think that the proper course of action would be to prove that case and then say, OK, this deal is no longer valid instead of kind of unilaterally pulling out of the deal because... I don't know if Trump didn't like it. It was that a deal. terrible idea. I think the Iranian community and everyone has, has come out and open, openly acknowledged that this was a terrible idea. 45 years of diplomacy with this regime was a terrible idea. So when you come to where we are now, where you say things like, OK, well, the only option we have now is war. That's because of you. That's because of you, that you've been empowering them for 45 years. We, the Iranian people, have given you options over and over and over and over again of what you could have done, okay, stop with these um, nuclear deals, stop with these trade agreements. Um, I mean, G Germany's trade agreements with, with Iran are just absolutely insane. Stop with the hostage diplomacy. Stop with the trade agreements. What do you mean? It, I mean, the Europe, the UK, the US, um, Western governments are, have been doing business, doing like it just they've been empowering the regime in various ways for the past 45 years what should have happened from the beginning is an isolation tactic like an isolation technique where there's no like hmm? i mean i mean doesn't this end up hurting uh you know willing buyers and sellers on both sides of the deal yeah, I mean, and embargo san san sanctions what tend to sanctions? fall on the the population right sanctions do but if they are um, not inconsistently. This, this, this is what hurts the po population, where you do some sanctions here and you don't really... If you're going to do something to take out the regime, right, you have to go the whole way. You've got, got to go the whole way. Otherwise, what you're going to do is you, you put a little bit sanctions here, you cripple the economy. It's not quite enough to take out the regime. The people are suffering. It's just, it's, it's, it's do we have examples of that working, though? I mean... It seems like embargoes and sanctions even applied in a very draconian, intense manner with coordination from an awful lot of Western countries. Do it doesn't result in regimes necessarily ending. It results in an incredible... No, it does. And, 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 and it, it, ten it also tends to result in an escalation of hostilities and is a kind of precursor to war, uh, historically speaking, right? I mean... During the time that they had the, um, the 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 maximum pressure campaign, the regime was really on its knees. It really was on its knees. There are many 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 points that um, because because they cannot deal with internal contradictions and external contradictions at the same time. There have been many many times that this regime has been brought to its knees, and right at that turning point is the exact time that the U.S. decides to um, unleash billions of billions more. 
um, to engage in more diplomatic relations with them, it's it's they're not giving the Iranian people a chance. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. And please subscribe to Reason's YouTube channel and the Just Asking Questions podcast feed for notifications when we post new episodes every Thursday.